Darling, you send me. I know you send me. Hi, lovely humans. This video is going to be all about what type of place you can get in Paris for a somewhat limited budget. I have been living in Paris, France for the past five years on and off and I've been a student for this time so I have a, quite a bit of experience in living in Paris when you don't have like a ton of money. I am quite privileged though that I was able to afford living within Paris city limits. I know that's not the case for everyone. Uh, and yeah, I already have a video about the different arrondissements in Paris, like a guide to each neighborhood in Paris, and also a video about apartment hunting in Paris and everything I can teach you on how to go through that. So if you are interested, I will leave this links in the screen, in the description, all of that. So in this video, I'm going to share with you useful info about the three apartments I've lived in Paris giving you info about the size, the rent, the area, what were their pros and cons, if they were worth their price, all of that. And I will also give you a tour of the apartment I currently live in and the room I currently live in, uh, for which I pay 660 euros. So stick to the end to know how I got this uh, great deal. So I moved to Paris from the suburbs when I just turned 18 at the start of my second year in college and because it was like a starter apartment I basically just wanted to be very close to my college and uh, have the smallest budget possible. I ended up moving in to a Chambre de Bonne, what we call a Chambre de Bonne in Paris. So it was a small studio at the very top of a very old classic Hussman architecture type of building. Chambre de Bonne basically are just those studios that are at the top floor uh, without elevators usually, in my case, yeah, sixth floor, no elevators. And the characteristic of those is that usually the toilets, the bathroom is shared between a couple studio or even the whole floor. And in my case, not only did I share uh, the restroom with the whole floor, I also had a shower room that was outside of my bedroom and that I shared with one other studio. So that was a bit special, let's say. The room itself was an 11, 12 square meter square with white wall and quite a high ceiling, which did mean that I got a lot of natural light, again, being on a top floor. Uh, my first year being there, there was just like a twin bed. And then my second year, there was a mezzanine bed, which added a lot of extra space. So the big pro of that room was the price, 500 euros, stinking deal and the location that was very close to my college then there was also a ton of storage for like books uh, and such like it was quite well organized for such a small space but yeah then the biggest cons were the fact that it was quite small the fact that I didn't really have a proper kitchen at all and yeah the fact that the shower room was <laughs> down the hallway the stairs could be a disadvantage for some people. Yeah, six floors with an elevator, but to me, that was fine. My second place was a much larger studio and quite an atypical place. This studio was located in the 20th arrondissement at the north of the 20th arrondissement, so near the border with the 19th, uh, very close to Parc de Belleville. And what I mean when I say it's atypical was because basically from the street, you had to go through a building and then a little courtyard with lots of plants and then a second building. And then you would get to a very small patio with a house, like a one story house that was very small. And there was actually just two studios next to each other with their own basements. So that was quite interesting. And I was in one of those studios, which meant that I was kind of in a house. Like I didn't have any upstairs neighbor, any downstairs neighbor. I had a basement. I had access to like a, my own little patio thing with like a garden table and chairs. I usually am not one for ground floor apartments, but this one did get quite a bit of natural light thanks to the many windows on the patio and the uh, ceiling windows. But yeah, I did have a very limited view like I was, my, my windows were facing the buildings across the patio. Uh, also, it was very quiet because it was so far removed from the street. And even if I was like in a very lively neighborhood, I had 
a lot of quiet time. Uh, this place was quite like the decoration was a bit old fashioned, but it did have the big advantage of having like an actual bathroom <laughs> for once. Uh, yeah, a small but actual bathroom, an actual kitchen. I also had a washing machine, like a laundry machine, which is not in every studio in France. That was cool. And the bed was one of those that you can put up to the ceiling. So what that meant was during the day, I could just put it up to the ceiling and gain so much extra space. The big pros of this place were the size of it, the whole system with the bed that made it very convenient, the fact that it had a little outdoor area, uh, and the neighborhood that I really, really loved. Like I would love living there again. The cons though were the fact that rent was 820 euros, and that did not include electricity, internet, anything. Uh, that just included water. And 820 euro for a space that big is not that expensive, but given the neighborhood could have been a bit cheaper. And also the problem was that because it was basically a house, uh, I didn't have neighbors around me, uh, the heating cost so much. Like I was spending so much money just on heating up the space during winter. And yeah, that was a big con for me. Like it was very poorly insulated so because of those cons especially like in terms of price and how it was very much at the limit of the budget for me when i had to move out for an internship in london i didn't sublet the place i just fully moved out i have been living in this apartment for about four months and i rent a furnished bedroom with my private bathroom in an apartment that i share with three other roommates I pay exactly 660 euros of rent every month and that includes all the bills, electricity, heating, uh, Wi-Fi, air conditioning. It is a huge steal, uh, especially so central in Paris. And so I am gonna give you more information about the apartment, but first let's start about talking about my neighborhood. in the 14th arrondissement of Paris, actually north of the 14th arrondissement, which is an area with quite a few big boulevards, but also small, some small streets. I have access to lots of bakeries, lots of restaurants, lots of bars and coffee shops. Not many cheap supermarkets though, unfortunately. Like that's something that I keep being annoyed at is, I have supermarkets, but they're so small and so expensive. But yeah, uh, from my apartment, I have easy access to Luxembourg Gardens, like it's so close, it's really lovely. I can just go there for a walk. In COVID times, it's a bit different, but you know. Uh, and also uh, quite close to my place, like 15, 20 minutes, I have access to Montparnasse, which is like, a, you have a huge shopping mall there, cinemas, lots of bars. Again, social life is not happening right now, but it's there. Uh, and yeah, it's a very, very safe arrondissement. And because I'm north of the 14th, I'm close to everything that's central Paris. I have one RR line, the RRB. I have access to three metro lines. I have access to like a few bus lines as well, including one that goes through three major train stations in Paris. So yeah, super convenient locations. I'm very happy with it. It doesn't have like a small neighborhood feel to it necessarily. But hey, it is still very lively. And since there is a university nearby, I also get like lots of places that have student friendly prices in terms of like bars and restaurants and such. I'll look around. I live in one of the modern apartment buildings in this area. And my building is actually a private residence where each floor has two flats, one four bedroom apartment and one two bedroom apartment. So I live in one of the four bedroom ones. When you enter the apartment, you have a long corridor with four doors. Each one is a different bedroom with a private shower. Note that this configuration is not the most typical configuration of Parisian apartment. Uh, this is very much an apart like a building that was made for flat sharing. So that's not typical at all. Usually, Parisian apartments will have one bathroom that may be shared by all of the bedroom, all of the people, sometimes two, but that's even 
quite rare. Down the hallway, there is a laundry room. So we have a washing machine and a dry machine. Furnished places in Paris don't always have a washing machine and you almost never find a dryer uh, because we tend to just hang out our clothes. Then you have the living room and dining room. This place actually only came with the table and chairs, but the roommates built this couch, which is really cool. We each have our own cupboard space for food and utensils, and then there is also some shared utensils. The kitchen technically has a dishwasher, but it is broken and probably not getting fixed soon. My roommates did add a lot of their own touches and brought things for everyone, such as a toaster or the oven, which I really appreciate. balcony which may look a bit shabby but it's so so pleasant and here is something that I actually love so much about this apartment the view we are not facing any famous monument or anything we don't have like a super Parisian skyline in front of us but we have no buildings too much like we have trees we have nature I have spent many hours on this balcony chatting with my roommates at night after dinner or like I've also grabbed breakfast there a few times and yeah, it's just very cool. Now on to my bedroom. My bedroom and bathroom give me about 15, 16 square meters of private space, which is really great for Paris. And I love that it's Southwest facing. It means I get a ton of natural light. I have just sunlight pouring in even now that it's November and days are getting shorter I just never feel like I'm lacking light and that's very important for me this bedroom looked a bit different when I got it the furniture was arranged differently there was another table and no bookshelves so I definitely added my own touch by switching the table bringing in buying some pieces of furniture rearranging things around and of course adding plants and wall decor you may notice there is quite a bit of space left by the window and in the apartment in general. And ultimately, I do want to make more like a cozy reading nook vibe and add even more plants. But for now, it's very convenient, especially when I have friends over or in this COVID-19 time when I'm working out at home, when I'm uh, doing my yoga. Since filming the B-roll for this <laughs> video, I have added a new plant. I have a new baby. Uh, and yeah, it's been... <laughs> It's been very good. I am turning into a plant mom. And by the way, if you want to see uh, some of my plant mom adventures, follow me on Instagram. It's mostly just pictures of Paris and of my travels, but I do post in my stories sometimes about my plants development. It's very exciting to me. my bathroom guys I so appreciate having my own bathroom because I feel like issues between roommates are often around the cleanliness of certain areas and especially the bathroom and we don't have to like uh, arrange our schedules and have to choose when we can take a shower or whatever <laughs> so it's very good to have my own space for that Again, though, definitely not something that you commonly find in most Parisian apartments. This bathroom has a great mirror, though the light is very, very yellow. And yeah, I've decorated it with fake plants, uh, some of my own skincare product, and also a postcard of all Chinese propaganda poster. If you're new around here, I lived in China for a year, and yeah, there was this great Shanghai propaganda museum, and I thought having the sport car in the bathroom would be a very like fun touch. And then, yeah, every time I've had guests over and they've used my bathroom, they're like, what the fuck is going on on your wall? Can you just explain the postcards to me? Like, it's very intriguing and it sparks a conversation. It's just, yeah, I don't exactly want to have postcards of Chinese propaganda in my main space, but in a fun place, you know, 
The only issue with this bathroom, uh, uh, ex outside of the fact that the light is very yellow, is really the lack of cupboard space. I only have this small cupboard for all of my makeup product, all of my skincare, hair care, etc. So it does get annoying. Uh, and I've also had to put a lot of effort into decorating to distract the, from the fact that the paint is really damaged in many points. Uh, I know there have been issues in the past uh, of water damage and that's why there are so many places where the paint is just shit. <laughs> so I've just tried to cover it up and put a lot of things that attract your attention and are pretty so you just don't see <laughs> the bad parts. So that was my apartment tour and my room tour. That's what I get for 660 euros a month in the 14th arrondissement of Paris. Again, as I've said, it is a really great deal. Uh, it can be hard to find this amount of space, this type of amenities and commodities for this price. But I'm also making this video to show you that throughout my three apartments that I've lived in, those have all been good deal. Like you can find places in Paris that are not super expensive and that have like that are decent really of course it depends on what your priorities are and what your criteria are uh, yeah i've personally always prioritized having decent light ha being in a somewhat decent neighborhood in terms of safety and in terms of access to where i want to go Again, if you want to learn everything about how to apartment hunt in Paris like a pro, I have a video that's an exhaustive guide, a comprehensive guide uh, on how the housing market works here, what landlords expect, how to avoid scams, all of that. And I also have a video on all of the neighborhoods in Paris, a little guide to figure out where you want to live. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe for more tips and tricks on life in Paris, travel in France and abroad. Please comment your opinion on my place and what you found in Paris, what have been your struggle and your great stories and your horror stories about apartment in Paris. I would be very curious to hear that. Uh, you can also send me a DM on Instagram if you have a question or follow me there for more photography and content. and. Yeah, thank you so much for watching until the end and I hope I see you soon. Bye!